from the Tie Cats Audio Network. This is Morialli and Hitch. All right, welcome everybody to the Morialli and Hitch podcast. I'm Mike Morialli. That's Rob Hitchcock. He's got his hat eaten by his dog, but he's still wearing it. So uh, we'll get into that later. Listen, buddy, what's going on? This is uh, week whatever, and uh, we're back again. Another special guest today, which is exciting. It has certainly made our podcast much more enjoyable, at least for you and I. Well, <laughs> it, it is true for you and I because I've been asking some of the guys on my hockey team, and they're like, you guys have been doing podcasts? I said, yeah, we've done four in the last <laughs> month. Oh, we better get on those then. I'm like, okay, th- that's nice. Nobody knows we're even doing them. Let's go, Botko. We've got to get some... Uh, we got to get get it out there, get the word out there that we're doing this again. Yeah, buddy. Well, listen, Butko's got lots of other stuff on the go, you know. Uh, yeah. We're not too sure what it is. So, Cats again. Our, our regular update, sitting at 0-3. Not not where you want to be to start the season. What what, what are they going to do, Rob? What are they going to do to fix it, turn things around? We kind of talked about it last week as well when they were 0-2, but 0-3, they still... You can't panic. Well, they've got a lot of games left to go, but still, I mean, concerning that they didn't score. They only scored three points in the second half, which is very concerning. Again, going against a phenomenal defense in Winnipeg. You know, osha has got those guys playing. Uh, they're looking pretty good again, Winnipeg. But, I mean, to score three points in the second half is, is just not going to cut it. And I know Coach O and the coaching staff are they're addressing that this week. And don't panic. I wouldn't say panic, but... Um, you know they're not getting killed, but they're they're finding ways to lose. That's for yeah, sure. Yeah, and, and you know it's a long season, uh, eighteen games, and you know it, it, it's a playoff league, man. I think you and I both know this. You make it to the playoffs, and then anything can happen from there. And it's all about where you end up at the end of the season. Because we may be in week sixteen, seventeen, and eighteen talking about this uh, in front of our twelve guests, and uh, we won't even remember the zero and three start. We'll just be talking about what's happening, and hopefully, we're talking about some good stuff. Yeah, and they'll have probably, you know, ho- I'm hoping more than eight wins, and they might even get in the playoffs. <laughs> Actually, this year, the way it's going with the East, you got to look at that crossover already. Yeah, like, you don't want to start now, but it's it's crazy how, uh, like it's, again, Toronto, I don't, oh, we've got to talk about this. How about uh, the quarterback for BC, the oh, Canadian, yes. who just broke the Canadian record for quarterbacks, 436 yards he threw for. They beat Toronto 44-3, to pounded them. There were two and zero, oh, and this kid Rourke, Rourke. yeah, Rourke, Nathan Rourke. Is wow, like he, he's the deal. He looks good. He reminds me of like a little bit of again. I don't want to say Flutie, but he reminds me of that same kind of body type, a little bit bigger than Flutie was, but could throw the ball upfield. Smart, poise in the pocket. Uh, he looks good. I like this well, kid. I, I think we got to give him his props, man. This is this is like a Canadian quarterback. Hasn't happened in forever. I don't care who you talk to, and you can talk about a guy that gets a couple plays here, a couple starts here. You've never had a season start with a starting Canadian quarterback as your number one, like we're seeing in BC. This kid is proving yeah. – it doesn't matter whether he's Canadian or any other nationality. The kid can play. But you're right. His poise, man. Like he, he. I think he's 24. In and around, he's young. Yeah. And he's he's playing yeah. like he's 34. Like the game slow is slow yeah. for him. And that's that's a sign of a good quarterback. Put it this way: he's got 103 points. He's put up in two that's games. Crazy. Like, come on. Like it against two pretty good defenses. So that's. Uh, that's, I know it's not just him; it's a team game. But he's he's throwing the ball. He's uh, he's he's quarterbacking out there. I, I can't wait to see what he's got this week. I'm actually tuning in if it's a late game. I'm going to watch. But I, I like I like what I see out there. That's for but sure. Isn't it funny how you know this is kind of you know the whole case that you know you and I hometown kids got a chance to play in our hometown. I mean that was uh, I mean it could, doesn't get any better than that. You know a lot of fans used to come out and support us, and, and you got this Canadian quarterback. I mean that's. This is no disrespect to any other, you know, players that come in, international, American, etc. But there's something special about watching a Canadian kid perform well on the biggest stage here in Canada. And I think everybody should support that. Yeah, and I think BC is now supporting it with the new ownership there. Um, it, it looks it looks like, you know, there's the, the lower bowl looked like there was a, you know, maybe 20,000, yeah. maybe 18,000 there. But now... With 103 points, two home games, like I'm telling you, they're they're going to start to, uh, you know the, you know they did the top, they put the big, yeah. uh, 
banners up so you can't it looks like it holds fifty thousand now that it looks like it's actually full so i'm uh i'm actually gonna tune in i'm gonna if i don't even know who they're playing this week but i'm gonna uh, i'm gonna tune in whenever no matter what time it is and watch it it's gonna be fun yeah it's worth it's exciting. exciting i mean you and i both have a little taste of that with uh larry justanis remember back in the day larry yep. no larry was a beast Larry was a six yeah. foot five, maybe six foot six, two hundred and forty pound rocket of an arm. Straight, straight oh, drop yeah. back. Fucking, <laughs> He's not no, going anywhere. Fucking let it rip, and that was kind of our yeah. taste of that. I'm trying to think of um, Chris, Chris Flynn. Flynn. Well, he was special. Now, heck, heck, Creighton, what five oh, years yeah. in or four years in a row or yeah. something? And I can't believe he didn't really make it up here. I mean, exactly what Flutie yeah. does, same body type, everything. But I guess that was the time when, you know, the Canadian quarterbacks weren't really getting looked at, which is a shame because that, that guy played against my brother Paul on oh, Acadia. Oh, he was a beast. <laughs> or just after, he was a beast. Yeah, he was. Yeah. Uh, he played with our buddy there, Noah Cantor, <clears throat> at St. Mary's. And, yeah. um, but I remember watching him play. Believe it or not, his first pro gig was with the Montreal Machine. Do you remember the Montreal? It was the World League, yeah. World Football League, yeah. or the hell it was called. And they were playing out of Montreal. Yeah. He actually got some playing time then, but never really got a chance. You know, typically it's like, okay, we got this great Canadian quarterback. What else can he play? Can he play receiver? Can he play DB? Because we're not going to give him a shot at quarterback. And then you have the other kid at Edmonton, Trey Ford. I don't know if you've ever seen this guy play in uh, at Waterloo. He was a quarterback. Him and his no. oh, what a what a athlete. What an athlete. Oh, yeah, yeah, this yeah. guy this guy can play. So, anyways, the, the point I'm trying to make is – Man, that sells tickets. That gets eyeballs. You get yeah. this Canadian kid. Oh. There's that proud Canadian factor that the CFL's always been about. And I, I had this, I, I had this sense that over the last few years of all the BS back and forth with management and, and the PA and, and COVID and all this other BS that we lost really the Canadian and the Canadian Football League. But with a guy like Rourke, it actually feels like okay, this is what it's all about. This is good. Yeah, I agree. And I have to let the listeners know who's who are not watching this that Mike is in his backyard. So if you hear birds, he doesn't he doesn't own 48 budgies in his house. <laughs> They're actually he's out, he's, he's outside with trees around him, so he doesn't own a lot of budgies. Oh, not every, <laughs> he's not sitting yeah. in his basement in cages. <laughs> not everybody uh, watches this on on our uh, video feed. Yeah, the problem but what the hell is this guy doing? They can hear the tweet 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 tweet. Hey, so listen to this. I uh I had an opportunity to go to the Arkells oh, at Tim Hortons Field on Saturday night. I went, uh, 25, 26,000 people there. It was the largest show the Arkells have played in yep. front of. Um, and I guess that went all the proceeds, or most of the proceeds went to um, a basketball kind of hey, a the rally court, court that the rally they're putting court. in, yeah. a rally. Yeah, they're putting that in in Hamilton, which is uh, which is fantastic, seeing how the Arkells are, are, well, all went to Mac and Hamilton Boys, which is really nice to see. And I saw... I saw Matty Afnick and I saw Scott Mitchell and Scott. I said to Scott, "Are you scared to come on the show?" He's like, "No, I'll come on next week." I said, "So he could be our special guest. I don't know." Let's find out. I said, "You're scared. You're scared to come on." He goes, "I'm not. I'll come on. You just let me know when." I said, "We've been trying to get you for a exactly. year. Exactly. You're scared." <laughs> hey, we'll, we'll get him up. So, but the Arkells, they're awesome in concert. Hey, eh? they're awesome live. Uh, I, I only saw pictures. I wasn't able to go, but um, it was it was very cool. Now. That rally court you're talking about is already in. So that, that was put in just a couple of days before the concert. And uh, yeah. Superfan Nov came down. And uh, I, I know it's a it's a really cool piece. And somebody from Canada Basketball, uh, Michael Bartlett was there, etc. And speaking of the Arkells, Max Kerman is really good friends with Nick Nurse, head coach of and the I Raptors, gonna, as you know. I was just going to say and, that. I was just going to say that because Nick, Nick Nurse was like two doors down see? from me. And uh, I saw him, and I'm like, you see him rocking out, and I'm like, what's he doing here? And then I found out that he's uh, really good friends with Very him. Very good so. friends. And they played together. And did you know that he played? He played yep. with them on stage, guitar, and, and he's their newest yep, member. I, <laughs> That's what they're called. The Arkells are calling them. <laughs> so there's, and then there's the connection of, and it's kind of unfortunate, but uh, this Friday, um, both the Tie Cats and actually Team Canada, coached by Nick Nurse, uh, Team Canada basketball, the men's senior team, are both playing in Hamilton. So we're, you know, from our perspective, the CBL, we're promoting and, and uh, throwing that game at uh, First Ontario Centre 
uh, Friday night with uh, the senior men's national team with all the NBA guys, Shea Gilgis, Alexander, Jamal Murray will be there. Uh, Lou Dort will be there. There's the list goes on and on, which is really incredible because it hasn't happened in like 38 years in Hamilton. The only unfortunate thing yeah. is it's at the same time as a, as a tie cat game. So wherever you are, tune into the other one, watch it on TV, do something. Uh, you know, we're, we're same time same, in the around same the same time. time. Yeah. We, we had no choice, yeah. but on the date. So we, uh, we didn't want to lose the opportunity to, to bring this to Hamilton. I think it's really important, but, uh, you're still, you, you know, that you're not going to get the diehard type. Oh, I know that. Oh, I know that. <laughs> That's not no. happening. That's not I, happening. I must <laughs> say, you know, it's a little bit of a different crowd. It looks the the CFL yeah. crowd and, and the CBL crowd or the the, the basketball crowd are, are a little bit different. But um, but yeah, we're we're pumped about that. And the reason that that came up is you know Max I, I, he'll probably be split too. He's not going to know where to go with yeah. his relationship with Nick and and the Tie Cats, but. Uh, more things coming to the city is is good. So we're getting close here, buddy. We got a, another guest in a couple minutes. I don't want to jump the gun because historically, in the last three guests we've had, they they couldn't even get on the show or couldn't get off the show. Well, from our last message yesterday, this person uh, it must be computer savvy because they did a little pre. I saw the they did pre. a little pre yesterday, and he, he got on or she got on uh, right away. Wow. So. This must be somebody that's that's good with computers. Oh, we got like a minute to go here. But Corey, you need me to thumbs up or, or what? We're good to go? Oh, okay, here we go. go. Listen, uh, better late than never. This is the fourth guest, Rob. We're going to get in a row. Again, you and I have no idea who this person is. We, no. we, we have been surprised now. Uh, just for historically speaking, started with a surprise guest with Darren Flutie like three weeks ago, which blew my mind because I didn't expect to get anything from Darren followed up by, by Danny Mack, who was awesome. Uh, and then last week, Joe Mumford. I mean, those are three heavy hitters. So, uh, either we're going to take this one up a notch or this is going to go, this we'll find out. We'll (laughs) We'll see. We'll see. We'll tell you right away what it's going to be. All right. Without further ado, Butko, would you please let our guest in? Drum roll. Dave. Oh my! <laughs> it just upped. It just upped. Hacker, <laughs> what is happening? Jimmy, Jimmy, up, Jimmy. <laughs> Do I look bald? So I put a hat on. <laughs> Let me see. I'm getting old. Dave. Oh, you look handsome, David. You look handsome. Oh, David. What have you been up oh to? My. Oh my! Let's have, okay for the people that can't see. We have just been blessed by having Dave Hack on the show. Long-time offensive lineman, all-star, all-round great guy, hell of a player, hell of a player. And uh, he's also got an alter, alter ego named Jimmy. We may or may not get into that at some point. I don't know. I don't, I don't think Jimmy's coming out today because it looks like you're sitting at the, at work. Oh, no. So, so this is going to be dangerous. Jimmy's been numbed. He's numbed. He's numbed. Yeah. He's numbed. But Hacker, what's going on, buddy? Just finishing school. We, you know, we had graduation last uh, Saturday, so we finished up with school. You know, our sports were done two weeks before that. I'm, a, I'm the athletic director. People, if you guys don't know, I'm the athletic director at a high school down here. Um, you know, I've been here. This is my going on to my twelfth year. We have 36 sports, wow. 67 teams. You know, there's probably 1,300 kids in the program. Wow. So we have a pretty good sized program. We're a, a good. Uh, an outstanding high school in in New York. So so it's a it's it's a lot of fun, but it's busy. Yeah. You know, that's kind of what I've been busy with. And, you know, the home life is good. Deborah's doing well. we got a dog, so Willow's doing good. So You're all the, the good best. Stuff. You're the best. <laughs> I love him. Oh. Hey, you look like you could still play, like maybe uh, maybe safety. Not in alignment anymore. You maybe safety. Some weight. I good. tell people I have. I've been, it's, you know, it, it, you really kind of have to watch what you eat and, and drink. You know, when, you, when you're not burning off the calories like we were, you got to be careful because you'll be balloon up fast i tell people i could still do a do a a, a pass a draw block a draw block play and a backside run i could definitely do those so yeah. if, if we run everything away and you know, a draw where i don't really have to touch anybody i could still do it you know who would take your position now what's that you know who would take your position because he's a lot bigger than you ozzy <laughs> well he was always pushing to get on that on the, the guard he was always pushing burns that, that right guard spot uh. Oh, but no shoulder pads. Well, how are you guys doing? Oh, we're doing good. The, the podcast. This and... is it. Hey, this is uh, you know this is the extent that Rob and I are communicating on a regular basis, which is perfect, by the way. 
Yeah. But many many people don't know you are in the, the Buffalo area. Where whereabouts are you're not you're not too far. No, I'm in Orchard Park. Yeah. So the the our district is uh, the Bills Stadium is actually in our district. So we're you know Orchard Park, which is not you know it's sort of south of Buffalo pretty much. It's a it's a you know pretty good or a pretty good suburb and a, a good sized district. But yeah, right outside of Buffalo. That's where I grew up. I grew up in a my mom's family owns a dairy farm in a town, probably t- ten minutes away, wow. which they actually just sold. Oh, it, my uncle just Whoa. yeah. You, my uncle are you retired? You gonna retire? Yeah, well he's seventy five years old. No, you. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm gonna retire now. <laughs> no, it went to the wrong wrong part of the tree. <laughs> But they're but they're retired. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. <laughs> hey, so awesome. A, a lot of people uh, who remember you remember like how dominant you were on the field. Like you were you were a bit of an animal. Like where where did that come from? Like where did that? Because right now, if they're listening to you or watching you, they're like, "Who is this guy? Didn't play professional football? He's too." <laughs> like, and I'm even trying to figure out who the hell you are at the moment. But I know you're in your office. So, <laughs> but why don't you tell us where that edge came from? What what kind of? How about you? A little bit about your journey, how you got to the CFL. Yeah, I mean, I grew up in the Buffalo area, played football. And football's always been important to me. You know, as a kid, I remember I, I actually told the story yesterday when I was I went to a high school that didn't have football. And was when I was a freshman in high school, I was a, you know, probably five eleven, two hundred and twenty pounds, just a little blob of a kid. And our guidance counselors would bring us in. They're like, "Oh, you know, what do you want to do when you go there?" I said, "I want to be a professional football player," and she kind of laughed at me. And I was a soccer goalie. It was just a kind of a dumpy little turd, and, <laughs> and she laughed at me, and it really stuck in my, you know, stuck in my feathers. And I was kind of like, you know, that lady was a dream smasher, and I didn't like that. And you know, I. I, you know, I of course grew, and then I, I got a chance to play football, and I went to a pretty pretty good high school in Buffalo, you know, outside of Buffalo, and you know, went to the University of Maryland and had a pretty good career there, um, you know, and I always kind of had that little edge, like a, you know, I always when I would prepare and go into a game, you know, I would write be the best on my BTB because I wanted to be the best, you know, I wanted to be the best. I, I could thought be. it was bring the boots. I wanted to be the best. That's what I thought that said. <laughs> <laughs> That was more Philly. <laughs> Philly was the bring the booze guy. <laughs> he and his margaritas. Um, but I got um, when I was at Maryland. When I first got there, the the offense we ran was more of a power double, tight end, H back, you know, pound guys. Frank Wycheck, who played for the Titans, was our, you know, was a tight end. So I went there as a tight end. Oh, did you? I and didn't even you see know Frank, that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. When you see when, when you you know when you watch Frank run and catch and jump and you're like. Uh, I can be the eighth string tight end, or I can go be an offensive lineman. <laughs> and they recruited me as a tight end offensive lineman because I was a bigger kid. And um, so I started playing O line. And then my third, the coach ended up getting fired. And the new guy that came in and ran the run and shoot. And the run and shoot was big at the University of Houston and big with the Houston Oilers. Um, and John Jenkins was the head coach or the offensive wow. coordinator uh, at, the, at those schools. So when I got done playing at Maryland, I had a tryout with the Dolphins, and then. The CFL team, Roy Shivers was actually the GM in Birmingham, called and said, hey, you know, we'd like you to come down. We've had a couple guys get hurt. We want you to come down and play. And, you know, we know you know the offense because it's very similar to what you ran in college. So I went down there and, you know, Jenkins, John was the offensive coordinator and Jack Purdy was the head coach. Um, we had, so you know, and I got there and, of course, the guys got healthy. So I was on the practice squad for, you know, four or five weeks. Um, in Birmingham, they had a good good lineman. They had good players. So I mean, Freddie Childress was down there. Thomas Ram was down there. Like there were some like solid dudes who were playing. And I was just you know it was my first experience. I kind of chuckled because when I got there, they gave me a half shirt with a Canadian with a maple leaf on it, and they had pitters. And I'm like, hmm, I'm not sure what I just walked into, but okay. <laughs> so anyway, I, after the season, the team folded. The American teams in the CFL folded. And uh, I actually got to try out with the Bills and went to camp with the Bills in 96 and then got cut at the end of training camp, got cut. And I got a call. It was from Mike McCarthy, just out of the blue. <laughs> hey, you know, yeah, <laughs> out of the blue. He's just like, hey, we, we had a couple guys get hurt. And I think, uh, was it Dwayne Morgan? Was he the tackle? Oh, maybe, yeah. 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 He had gotten hurt, and he was going to be out for a while, and they needed somebody to get there now because it was probably Tuesday or Wednesday. 
And he, he's like, if you can be here by 12, you know, he called me at 9 o'clock. If you can be here by 12.30 for practice, you might, you know, we'll put you on the roster. You might be able to play. I'm like, all right. So I hopped in my car and drove from Holland, New York to Hamilton, hopped out and did my, you know, practice, a couple of one-on-ones. I knew the offense because Jenkins yep. was the offensive coordinator. So, so it was a pretty, you know, easy fit for me. Um, and then I, I, we played uh, the first game we played against Winnipeg. It was at home. And then the second game we played in Regina, and that's where I met Bobby Jurisson, who was a pretty good player. And then, then the second game was actually in Montreal, and it was that's when they had, uh, they had Alfred, yep. they had Alfred Swag. Payton, they had Doug Peterson, and then Grant Carter was Grant uh, Carter might have been the Grant other Carter? defensive yeah, yeah, end. I know, I know the one, uh, Carter for sure. Yeah, it was Grant Carter. So those guys were yeah, good, yeah. and you know, and you know, Anthony was our quarterback, and he was good. You know, and we obviously we had a good, you know. Hamilton has always had good defenses, you know, and the, you know the guys were good dudes. I just remember, you know, I don't. I mean, I remember, I remember Hitch. You know, um, I don't know if you were playing or if you were hurt, but I, I remember you being there. And then I, the guys that I really remember were Philly and Mike Campbell. Oh, how can those you forget guys those good, guys? They were, they were good, but they were, you know, they were, you know, they were the the meatball brothers, but they were they were Assholes. good guys. Good. Assholes. Yeah. <laughs> you can say it. Yeah, you can. I can't in my office, but yeah, you can. Uh, yeah. Um, but they were, you know, they were good. They were like they made you feel like you were part of the team. Like yeah. I was just some dork American guy that rolled in, had no idea what end was up, pulled into that little parking lot behind the stadium, crammed my car and be into something, you know, one of the worst. But it was fun. And then yeah. after, you know, when then Dwayne got back and got healthy, came back, I went to actually ended up getting released and then signed back on with the Bills practice squad, finished the season with the Bills. I was actually on the, you know. The sideline when they, we lost the playoff game to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Jim Kelly got concussed, and uh, you know, but I was a practice squad guy. I had a blast. I mean, I'm a Buffalo kid. Oh, yeah. It was fun just being there, and the guys loved hearing my stories. They would, you know, game day, you know, I'd be rolling in, and they would be getting ready for a game, and they would love to hear the, you know, the, the talk of what I had been done, been doing. So it was, it was always, I was always the entertainment for those guys. But they were good guys. And then, you know, '97, I, I didn't come back up, and then '98, you know, I had a off-season call and it's funny because Pat Perlis, he called Perlis. me and he was like blah 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 and he was like Definitely. all right Sheldon good talking to you we'll see you at training camp <laughs> and Sheldon in the past Chuck was a That's guy right. who was playing old line for us he ended up Sheldon actually ended up playing in Saskatchewan for 10 years a heck of a player he played at Iowa State but he, they were trying to make him an old lineman in Hamilton but I just and then he, Pat called me back and goes oh, oh I'm so sorry I'm so sorry I called you the, the wrong name and then you you know so anyway you know, fast forward to probably the fourth week of the season, we're sitting in the office. You had talked about my nickname, Jimmy, and we're sitting in the meeting room, and uh, Pat is talking about, you know, Jimmy, you, you know, you got to get to this guy. You got to cut this guy off. And we're all like, I, like, I don't know who the hell you're talking about, <laughs> but okay. Like, because there's nobody, in, there's somebody in the old line named Jimmy. And uh, so Val was, Val St. Germain was in the meeting, and meeting room, and, um, you know, Pat said, Jimmy, like, you got to get this guy. And he like we're like like who are you talking about? <laughs> <That was Jimmy. laughs> and, and so Val was like uh, Pearls or Pat, you know that's Dave. <laughs> and then uh, and he was all oh sorry sorry. And then so then it just became you know the Jimmy from Seinfeld. Yep. Like, Jimmy Jimmy likes to block, and you know so it just kind of became that. But no, I you know back to the the point. You know I yes, the, that was a long answer to a short question, but. I just I you know I, I always knew that there were certain things I could control. One was my my effort, you know. Two was knowing the plays, and three was my intensity. And I you know I knew that I wasn't you know the most gifted, and I wasn't the strongest. I wasn't the you know. But if you combine those three things that I knew I was good at, then you know I could I could play the game. And you know Hamilton really fit. Like I think back to the plays, and I think back to that '98 year. And, I, I don't know if it was, you know, Ronnie or R.D. or Danny, but the plays just fit for me. Like, I knew, like, you know, Zebra was the zone and Tiger was the zone with the Nick block on the backside. Yep. Because the eye and Tiger. Like, so I knew that you were going to be there or Archie was going to be there or somebody was going to be there. So I didn't have to stay with the end. Like, it was just little things. Like, I just, yeah. you know, I'm popping Pepsi. Pepsi yeah. was, we slid right. So I knew I had the end man on the line of scrimmage. And Pop, pop was, we slid left, the, the odd side. So I knew that I had to get to number five. So it just it, it fit well, and you know we had a great that that window of time there was a pretty special window of time for us, and you know the guys were fantastic, and it was a good group of people, and 
you know, I, it's something where, like, yeah, I know we laugh about it, but, like, it was a pretty special time Absolutely. in my life, and I'm sure your life. So it, was, it was a good group of people. Absolutely, buddy. Wow. That was that was quite the answer, yeah. buddy. Jeez, I, thought, yes. I, I didn't so know did that's I, where Jimmy <laughs> came from of all these years. I yes. didn't know that's where it came from, from Pearl. Yes. Now, how old do you think Perlis was when he was coaching us? I don't know. He was probably, I mean, we were probably, I mean, I think Carl might have been older. Yeah, than like Pearls was young. And, and, and yeah. his dad, as you would know, being you know an American player, yeah. his dad was the, the bomb, right? George Perlis, right? A long time. Michigan yeah. and Michigan State, where was he at? Michigan, Michigan State. State. Yeah, he was. Yeah. And he coached for the Steelers. Yeah, George George was, he was, I mean, he was supposedly a player's coach. I, I actually did a football officials clinic. That's uh, something I'm doing now is I officiate high school and some college football down here you know it's kind of i'll get into that a little bit but but anyway like there's a lot of george perla stuff in the mid the, the camp the clinic was actually you know outside it was in lansing michigan and there was a lot of stuff in there in the michigan state yeah field house and complex like you, what if you want to talk about a facility oh i can imagine i could imagine <laughs> hey listen you got under armor behind you you went yes. to maryland uh hitch, I love you, you, you went to maryland <laughs> You played. You played with G. Roy. With, I can't yeah, remember. Kevin. G. Roy was there, wasn't he? Though at that time, or just G. Roy was G. Roy was a freshman or a sophomore, my senior right. year. But you played with Kevin. G. Roy's. I'm going to forget his last Plank. name. Plank. Uh, Plank. Kevin Plank, who is the founder of Under Armour, and he is. Is is it a true story that you were approached early on from Kevin to maybe invest at that time? Yeah. Like five, ten thousand dollars into Under Armour. Yeah. How did yep. that go? <laughs> tell the story, hacker. Tell the story. I mean, there, there was a time there where they were struggling. I mean, they were a newfound business. And, you know, I mean, Kevin was a hustler. Kevin is and was and is smart. And, you know, I tell the story when I talk to different things. We He used to sell roses at Valentine's Day. Really? You know, 1999 roses, you know, and we would hustle all around campus selling these roses and pack, guys would be packaging and guys would be running the credit cards, guys would be, you know, and at the end of the night he'd give us 300 bucks and be like, sweet, we'd, you know, we'd head down to the local establishment and, you know, we made 300 bucks and he probably made 30 grand. So wow. That was just a, that was just a thinker. I mean, I'd probably not 30, but probably 15. And, you know, he just was a thinker like that. So when he, we actually, when we were in college, Champion was the big name. Yeah. Yeah. And so we had these heavy gray T-shirts. We actually had like a spandexy bottom that we were. They were like a biker short. So essentially, he figured out the material to make a T-shirt because we used to have these heavy gray T-shirts. And if you know during training camp, oh, you're sweating, sweaty, and it's heavy, yeah. and it's gross and heavy. So he, he came up with that, and yeah, no, he was. It was him and Kip Folks was the other guy that they, he started with. There was a third guy that kind of didn't it fizzled out for them, but it was pretty much he and Kip, and they were. You know, Kevin's family had a place in Georgetown, which is right outside of Washington D.C., that they were, um, you know, using as their as their office. And uh, yeah, they were struggling. They were looking for investors. They were looking for people to, you know, put things in. And you know, I was a kid who had my first, you know, five hundred dollars and was excited and wasn't even thinking of that. But you know, there were, you know, again, it could have gone the other way, right? It could have been five hundred dollars that I gave to you know a thousand bucks i gave to a friend that i never got back so i just yeah i mean i, I and again like i probably at some point could have gotten involved with their company but i didn't want to i didn't want to be down there and i wanted to be i wanted to be a pro football player yeah you know i also passed on an opportunity to be a quality control guy with the new england patriots really in 2000. when was that yeah 2000 or 2001 really i didn't brian dable the new the current head coach with the with the giants yeah Jimmy keeps those things yeah, to himself. He doesn't let a lot of people oh, know. We don't know a lot about that. Oh. That's, that's that's the eyebrow the eyebrow raising. We know. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I, you know, I'm. I mean, I like. I'm a homebody. I like being at home. You know, I'm, my family's here, and you know, I, I I like being here. And I, you know, I know that. But I, but anyway, we were. It was 2001, maybe. It was right after we had a pretty good year. It was 2001, yeah. and new england was just coming together and they were looking for quality control guys wow and brian was a was like an assistant to an assist you know brian was an assistant with them and they had openings and i, th I think the guys they hired would have been the mcdaniel guy and the patricia the guy yep. with the beard i think they hired those two guys and but i was making good money and to go from making good money to making 12 grand trying to find an apartment in boston like mm -hmm. hey hacker it's 
you would have a few hundred million in the bank right now. It doesn't matter. It doesn't you wouldn't have a Grey Cup, 99 yeah. Grey Cup, right? a few hundred million or that, that what is it, well, eight thousand dollar ring that we had to pay tax on that they wanted us to pay tax on? <laughs> I think it's all good, to, buddy. It's all yeah, good. It, it, uh, but Brian, Brian was a high school classmate of mine, so Brian Dable was a couple years behind me at, at the high school I went to, and um, you know he obviously he's doing well. He's head coach for the Giants. He's a great guy. He's, you know he's going to do great things. Like they got to get their roster turned around, but but yeah, no, that was just one. Of, but again, I you know I was just I had just met my wife. I was making good money. I didn't really want to go to Boston and. There you, you go. Know, that's a hard life. Those oh, guys yeah. Have, it all worked out in the end, hard... Look at you now. You're sitting there. You're running a major program <laughs> down Orchard Park. Yeah. You're looking good. You got, yeah, you got a dog. Good. You got a dog. You got a dog. The dog's not named Hang Jimmy. On. No. Hang on. Same, same kind of... Uh... Same kind, Hacker, as your, your last one. Oh, oh yeah. Beautiful. See? That's Beautiful. Willow. Yeah. Look at that, Willow. Hacker. Now. Bernice Mountain Dog. Now, no, Hacker. but I've learned. You know, I've been doing different reading things and it's like you know hey we all make choices and i'm confident with what i've done and you know i'm like oh man i would really like to get into the but i you know the not being able to control the winning and the losing and the tensy like i mean that was part of the at the end i, I was so frustrated i mean i just wanted to win and i just you know i i did things because i wanted to win and like when you get to a point where you're like i don't know how we're gonna win a game and like we had some couple seasons like yeah. that and that was hard to in you know you talk hitch about the whole paying tax on the ring and you know that's kind of something here as a as the athletic director i try to make sure that our kids can be kids and play yeah. i try to be make it so the coaches can coach and don't worry about that stuff yeah. like you yeah. know we'll you know we do have some transportation stuff but you know i just remember that going to the i don't know if it was a 98 or 99 98 break up. i was so mad can you remember you remember that getting so on the mad bus when, oh angry you know what you let mad. let people know we, we've talked about it but let, let people know what we're talking about. <laughs> mad. just talking about having to pay like he wasn't sure winning the the eastern final was good because now he had to pay more money something the effect yes. of that and you're like it would cost more to go just, to the great cup the, yeah, yeah we're going to the great cup and it's like just be excited yeah, like, we were two and 16 you know the, the year before or whatever the hell four and 40 we were horrendous in 97 and now you're complaining about us going to the Grey Cup a year later. Just incredible. Because you got to give us, yeah, oh, my God. And it's, you know, I don't know. It, it was, the league was, you know, and shoot, three years later, we're bankrupt. And, like, yep. I remember thinking with Ron, you're like, man, what are you, Coach Lancaster, what are you so mad about? And, like, you look bad at, back at it, and you're like, I get why you were so mad. Like, Ronnie had an idea that he wanted it a certain way, and he wanted us to be able to play and not worry about that stuff. Yeah. And he couldn't do that. Yeah. And that, you know. And yeah, I just think of like the '99 Great Cup. We roll in, and there's 47 of us, and Calgary's got 87. And yeah. Wally asked Ronnie, "Where's the rest of the team?" Was and he's like, "What do you? This is it. <laughs> this is all we got. <laughs> this is it. Don't get hurt." But we didn't. Nope. I mean, that was a special thing about that group. Guys, guys would play through a snapped finger and a broken this and a whatever because guys wanted to. It meant yeah. something to be part of that group. Yep. You didn't want to miss out, right? So, didn't want to miss out no. on that group. So hacker, uh, we've we've talked about this, Mike and I, in the last couple of weeks. So I was uh, had an opportunity. I was talking with a couple of people in the organization with the Cats last week, and they're, tomorrow they're meeting for uh, they the committee's meeting to see who's going to be going up on the wall this year. Oh, nice! So there's some talk. Here's a there's guy some right talk. here. That's uh, what I. That's that's what I'm bringing up. So I'm I'm thinking, um, you know, this we talked. Danny Max got to be up there at, at some point. You yeah. hacker uh, with your years play and your community service and just the the, the person you are, um, you, you, your name is has got to be in that conversation as well for the next you know whether it be this year or any the other year from from coming on. But it's uh, you deserve you deserve that, pal. I mean, I'm Thank up there you, a couple of years ago that. and yeah, I'm not. It, it was a real. It was, you know, means he's not there because he's in Toronto. <laughs> he got the Toronto. He's gone. <laughs> Oh, are you in Toronto now? Me? No, 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 he's trying to say. The other girls. This, oh, this, going back and forth. This, the back and forth you did. This is a, yeah. Yeah, apparently you switch a rule. It, my eight yeah. years don't count, eh? Just the, the, no. the just the four I <laughs> no. left matter. Not the eight years I did blood, Canadian sweat, player tears. Year, so, Canadian you, MVP. You know your name's up there, too. Your name's up there, too. Your name's up there, too. No, but I, I got to be honest. Like I think it's a consensus amongst everybody that Danny Mac and Dave Hack got to be on there. Like the guy Ozzy's on there, well deserved. 
Um, Hitch is on there, obviously well deserved. Steiny on there? No, Steiny's in the, the Hall of Fame. Oh. He's not on the wall. Um, Joe, of Mumford. course, yeah, Mumford. Joe, and I, I think that's the extent of it from our group. That's it. But yeah. holy shit, Hacker, you know how many guys we played with that deserve to be up there. Not all of us are going to get up there. There but, were a lot of, but we had a you lot know, of guys. unsung hero guys that we played with that meant a lot. You know, I was thinking when when uh, Dave called and said we were going on, I was just thinking of some of the guys that, you know, your Calvin Tiggle, Gerald Vaughn. Coulter. You know, you think of, like, kind of the fall fall out of our team was, you know, losing Calvin, yep. losing Gerald, and then yeah. Joe Haggins getting hurt. Yeah. yeah. That really affected that group. And then, you know, we had the auto expansion, so you lost Carl and and Seth, yep. like Seth was a you know hard worker and was always doing all sorts of odd stuff in the weight <laughs> room. But he was <laughs> he was always ready to go. The funny well, thing, I, I, go ahead, go yeah, ahead. It's yeah, right. no, I just I, I think the criteria you know from going to the Hall of Fame, you know, and, and having your numbers and your years played and your great cups and that, and then going on the wall at, at your stadium, it's definitely years played. So I think some guys that have played two or three years, maybe might not get that opportunity because of the years played, but um, I think, how long did Ob play for? Only like three, I think. Yeah, I mean, he was in tr- yeah, he didn't play a so, long like, time. But then again, Les Brown got on the wall and only played a handful of years in Hamilton. So it's, it's yeah. you never know, yeah, right? I guess you never so. know how yeah. it works. But, but Hacker, you played how many? Uh, seven? Eight? No, nine. 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 That many, eh? I knew that. Nine. Wow, yep. nine Finally, years in Hamilton. Snuck it. Snuck it out. Yeah. Nine years in Hamilton's like forty-seven years in real life. <laughs> That's right. I mean, look at me. I'm gray. Grayed me. Made me gray. But but okay, let's talk about that for a bit. I, I loved Hamilton. Oh, yeah, Hamilton, Hamilton was, was our place. But you, yeah. even the stadium, the locker Everything. room, like, it, like leaking it was... by my locker. I love that. I love that about that locker room. Like that was my spot. That was a and the thing. Like, you know, Jerry I love the, the in the bathroom they had in the shower they had those little like plastic things hanging down like the cow like in my uncle's dairy farm so the, you know they were the fly things that knocked the flies the off fly the cows tape. and they'd walk through the fly tape. Yeah. Uh, but you you did this a lot of people don't know you didn't live in Hamilton for some years some years you did but for many years you yeah. literally drove back and forth to yeah. Buffalo and that was before nine yeah. eleven and all that stuff so what was that like like, what would you, hey, did you see at the border, like, wave to the guys and, and drive in? Like, yeah. what was that like? Yeah, they were, there were a lot of guys that I would see going back and forth. They were, they would see me coming and you would just explain. I mean, I wasn't, again, I was, I mean, I'm a pretty straight arrow, squeaky clean guy, so I'm not doing anything silly with my easy, you know, and then, of course, then they had the Nexus Pass yeah. and now they have a couple, so they, it made it easy to get across. But yeah, no, that was, you know, the first year I did it because I didn't, in 96, because I didn't know how long I was going to be there. In 98, I was, you know, oh, I should I get an apartment? Uh, and, 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 I, I had a good place to stay down here. I had my place down here. And then 99, I actually had a place in in uh, Grimsby. That's love right. Grimsby. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's where I'm at and, now. Uh, yeah, I love Grimsby. I mean, to me, Grimsby is it's what awesome. a great town. Awesome. What a great town Grimsby and is. And you were also, a lot um, of people don't know, but you also, you know, used to... Uh, ride behind Darren on the way home just to make sure he made it home. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. No, I was I was his like designated driver behind him, right? Yeah. Well he oh, would get lost. God. I mean he was he was bad. Oh, like, he would just <laughs> get distracted and be going the wrong way. Oh or just yeah, go right, right, right around the, the street. Car. Just go right back to Boston yeah. with the Saturn. He was fun though. I mean we used to play you know, he would shoot over, we played cribbage. It was it was fun. I it was kind of cool having him in, in Grimsby. Absolutely, I, I, like it, it I got nice a, I, Speaking about speaking about cribbage, remember playing on the planes, and then if you got double skunked, you had to you had to crawl down yep. the aisle way of the plane. And I got I'll never forget Hacker in his suit. He got double <laughs> double skunked, and he's going down. And and we're we're not on a charter, so we're with you know regular people on a flight. And Hacker's crawling from the front to the back, and he's stopping, lifting his leg up on on his knees and peeing, like, peeing like a dog, <laughs> pretending to pee and on people. And they're just it looking at pretty, us like, uh, <laughs> I'm sure they were kind of like, hmm. Huh. Yeah, what's man, going I, on? Can you imagine being on the? Can you imagine doing that now? That. Can, you, can you imagine? Oh. Can you imagine being the middle seat between me and Gary Brown? Like, oh, like, <laughs> Jerry or, Raft or Craftsy and Mahalik? Can you imagine being between those two guys? Oh my god! That, but what good! Time. Every time 
we went on a road trip, we got on a bus, we hung out at Brian Timmis or before a game, after a game, before practice. Like it was, it was family. Like it was, it was outstanding. Yes. It was outstanding. And we played with a ton of amazing players and we played against a ton of amazing players. And there's one guy that you played against, you already know who it is, that you had epic battles with. Epic. Now there's more than one. <laughs> But there's one in particular, yeah. and I think you know who we're talking about. That's Mr. Michael O'Shea. You and him yes. had something. You had a, a huge level of respect for one another. But, man, when that whistle went, you were, like, insane. Yeah. How did that all play out? Yeah, out? Where did that come from? Well, I mean, he was the best of the best. I mean, he was a big wig, you know, and, you know, it's still to be the best, you got to beat the best. And he was the best, so... He, he was a leader of that defense. He was, you know, he was the quarterback on that defense. So just like he was going after our quarterback, I was going after him. It would have been that. So any chance I got to get a little <laughs> extra something on him, I, I took it. And so did he. I mean, one of the, I can never forget. I mean, one of the last games I played up there, I got hit in, in the lower abdominal region by him right in front of an official, and they didn't call it. I was so mad. Did you I have mean, the chin? He Were you missed, leaning he, forward? He missed, him? of course, because yeah. he missed. But. <laughs> Well, it's, yeah. it's, it's hard to hit. It's hard to hit. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to hit. Uh. But no, he had, uh, you know, he was an intense guy and he was you know, intelligent and played with a certain level of toughness. And, you know, again, he was the leader of that defense, you know, and I would just listen and try and get his calls. And, man, if they left me uncovered and I got a sh- sh- chance to run right at him, I, I took it because he was always watching something else. He wasn't watching me. That's but, yeah, no, yeah. but but a lot of people also mask. don't know, Dave, that you're like basically deaf in one ear, right? I am. So is I that the deaf, right ear? Yeah. I, I always forget. What yeah, it is the right. So that's why I played right tackle. That's right. That's that's why my earbuds that's, are my left ear. That's why I remembered. That's what I was looking at. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I can't hear out of my right ear. I haven't. You know, it's something that it's been like that since I've been a kid, and I just kind of figured it out, right? Like I didn't need to. You know, as a right tackle, especially in the CFL, everybody's over here. Yep. I didn't need to worry about, you know, anybody over here. Maybe a Ray Thomas and a Ryan Donnelly, but I didn't really need to worry about them. And, uh, and I remember uh, coming up and, and getting all the physicals. I'm sure you didn't disclose that. <laughs> no. no. No, of course not. <laughs> you what was the doctor in 96? <laughs> Chargers. No. It was yeah, like right. I think it was Chargers. 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 That nice green uh, tile in that office. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Turn your head. <clears throat> Throw, throw your leg up on my lap. <laughs> he was scraping the pills off his, that were stuck to his palm. Yeah, no, no glove on and cough, eh? Yeah, put your yeah. in there. No, no glove and then put the pills off and scrape them off. Oh, my God. Oh, man. But, no, yeah, Osh was a, Osh was a heck of a player. Alfred was – I love yeah. playing against Alfred. Like, those guys, you know, again, when we had the horses, when we, it was fun to go play those guys. It was hard when we weren't as talented. Yeah. You know, and I know, like, we talk about having fun and – but it was hard when you know when we were. I didn't care about all the extracurricular stuff when we were. When you're losing, because oh, yeah, guys, guys, yeah. guys knew how to play. Everything. Guys knew how, yeah. but guys knew how to cut the cut the cut it out and play. Yeah. yeah. And when we weren't winning, guys were still into that. The newer guys were into that. And it's like you guys haven't figured out how to play the game yet. Yeah. You, had you, had to earn you that, might want right? to figure out how to play the. You had yeah, to earn that. You might well, want to figure out how to I play can, the game. Uh, I I can tell you from a defensive side, you know, playing against you two. Uh, and the, and our offenses that we had just you know made us so much better as well because we're we were so prepared going into some games because of because of you guys and and you know it was uh, just a always a pleasure to to play we we always got on each other's <laughs> under each other's skin I know Hacker and I we had some fun stuff I used to tell Coach Lancaster I got to go to the cottage once I had to leave early to practice and Hacker's like what the fuck. Why does he get to leave early for practice? Oh, and we all have to stay here. Remember that? That was the one day you were so, so, so mad. Michelle remember? called in. You were sick. I was That's sick. Right. Yeah. <laughs> He's still mad. You still He's remember? Still Jimmy mad. still remembers that. I sure do. <laughs> I, I tell people Jimmy's the only days I missed. Peek out just a little bit. You know how many days I missed as a football player from practice? <laughs> My I mean, entire career I mean, for illness. I mean, None. None. You yeah, tell him, Hacker. I was on my way up to the cottage. Yeah, yeah. Sick. the, one, the other one better. that drove me, the other one that drove like I and I think back to it was you two guys wanting to do the Telus golf tournament. Really? What happened? Because you were going to get free iPhones and you wanted Greg Marshall was going to move practice. No. I'm like, oh, no. the Bell tournament. Really? He See? was mad. 
Oh, he's still mad. No, like I mean, yeah. you got to you you because you got to start it off with something different than hey, we want to do this golf tournament because we're getting free cell phones. Yeah. How about you start off the hey, we want to do this golf tournament, we're going to buy you guys lunch. Everyone be like, sweet, perfect. We don't care. We'll practice we whatever. Think but. about that, Meatsy. <laughs> we're that we weren't the smartest guys, eh? All no, the time. No. We were well, you were. You well, were maybe, the smartest guys. Maybe, maybe you we just, were. It was one of those little things where when you're, you know, sitting in your little chair with your leaky lo- leaky roof, you're kind of like, hmm. Yeah. Well. Oh, no, we got away with a few things, but we still no, won. Of course. So of course. No. <laughs> so, the, Packer, the you were part of a team, and I, I just got to be. I'm pretty positive it's a CFL record, and that's giving up eight sacks in one season. Yeah. Wow. That is insane. Insane. There are some teams that have given up eight sacks in one game. We're talking about eight sacks in the entire season. Now, you you can tell us exactly why. Uh, obviously, you had great guys lined up beside you, but you had a guy named Danny McManus who, like, come hell or high water, that ball was coming out. And if that meant it hit me in the back of the head because I didn't turn around in time, that was just part yeah, of it. Yeah, he was but, ripping it. But how did that how did that all play out? Like that's unheard of. That's, he was that's ripping it. Of. Now it became one of those things where obviously Danny with you know being able to throw the ball fast, but once you kinda of got established Defenses were kind of like, oh, I'm not gonna you know yeah. I mean the guy would make the best I, I remember whiffing on a guy and like the ball's gone. So then the next time the guy's like Phew. Like all right, like now I got, you know, and it, it really gave you a chance like to do different things technique wise as a as a player, just because you knew that he was for the most part going to have the ball when it was needed to be gone, gone. But we, you know, we worked well together. We had a pretty good group. You know, it was Seth, it was Tim Princeton, Carl, and and Bernsey. and you know, we were Bernsey. a pretty intelligent group that knew where to be and you might get you know overpowered here or there but you knew where to be and that Dan, as long as you Danny knew where the free guy was coming from he was going to get rid of the ball and it was a you know I don't think we if you watch some of the films like I don't there were guys not even getting close to him the no. last five no. games of the five, five games of the season including the playoffs and the Grey Cup and you know that was a pretty special group you know and we also had you know great receivers with you know with you and Darren and uh, I think it was Corey, and I don't know who the who the, Greg, the Andrew Greg Andrew Andrew. Yeah. Shit, how, shoot, how can I forget it? Andrew, oh, if Greg, he sees yeah. this, you're in, you're in trouble. Oh my God, he's, <laughs> he's, he's probably already trouble. texting me. <laughs> he's texting you. Yeah. <laughs> but no, yeah, and then you had Ronnie. You know, Ronnie running the ball. So and Archie. You know, yeah. we had a good group of you guys. You know, you guys knew where to be. So Danny knew that when he was throwing the ball, you guys were there. Yeah, it, so, man. It just yeah. It seemed, you know, at that point in time. Playing football seems so easy. And then the years that you struggle, it seems so hard. Like it just there was something about those those few years and I still I still honest to God on a on a regular weekly basis pop into my head and say, Damn it, we couldn't keep those freaking guys together for a couple more years. Like we couldn't have gone back in two thousand and two thousand one and maybe two like because Steiny leaves for a little bit of money because we weren't giving it to him and Gerald leaves for a little bit of money and, and Tiggs goes and it, it just it, it really bothers me to this day that we could have had something special and it, it felt like a few thousand dollars got in the way and not from a like, player's perspective from an owner's like, perspective like Winnipeg has right now yeah we could have yeah. kept going yeah. could have kept going and we were close I mean 2000 and 2001 we were, we were yeah we should have I mean, been we were there were we, not on the, were we not on the goal line First down, well, on, the line, right? First on the down one, on the one, and they, tr- <sighs> and then uh, Dwayne Ford's on the sidelines. Danny tries to couple quarterback sneak. I don't know why we get it. When it what was the name of the package where you had we had uh, two fullbacks and the running back? Yeah. You brought Warren in. You brought and Dwayne yeah. Ford when it came in, and they didn't. They they tried to. No. And Danny's not yeah, a sneaking to... quarterback. He just does not enjoy doing it. So it's not his forte. No, oh. no, and I mean. But yeah, I mean, but you think I do think of that too. Like you know, obviously you're not going to be able to pay everybody. But I think, you know, not knowing what you know now, but like with the fran- the, the finances of the organization, they they always kind of made you feel like I don't know, like come to me and say great job. Here's an extra oh, something. There was no extra back then, right? We no, played before like, Bobby. Ke- yeah, like you yeah. could have kept some of those guys. But again, that whole crew, and then obviously, I mean, Joe getting hurt, Hagen's hurt too. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people don't know so, how good Joe Haggins was. Joe Haggins might have been one of the best all-round football players that I've ever been around. This is a, a guy that could play linebacker, 
that could rush yeah. off the end, he, that could play he safety, the ball. that he could catch, play, that could return, return kicks. Crazy. He made a good yeah. catch in Montreal, didn't oh. he? Yeah. Yeah, amazing athlete. Unbelievable. No, I, it was a punt or a kickoff where he ran down, was covering it, and it was on a kickoff. Hit yep. his shoulder, and it just yeah. went numb. Oh, he went through man. the wedge and on a kickoff. He went through the wedge and just hit sideways and went down, and that was uh, that was it. It was yeah, awful to see. But you lose a, guy, a young guy like that. You lose Kelvin. You know, like with the other thing we had in those the ninety eight ninety nine teams, we have great leadership. Yeah, and Carl. You know, when when Carl was on, Carl was one of the oh, best. Oh, Carl was yeah ever when he was locked in. He was locked in. He was great. And when he was you got the hell out of the way. <laughs> when, What's when Carl's guys, name? What's Carl's Lamont. name on our Lamont, on our chat? Lamont. Lamont. <laughs> Lamont. <laughs> when he was when he was you know when when bad Carl was around, he just stayed away from. Him. Oh but, yeah. I mean he, but he was great. I mean, and that's that's okay. You know, he would have some. Everybody has that. It's hard. Like you, you guys are in leadership roles. It's hard to be a leader all the time. Yeah. It's it's so, hard to. It know, was hard to. You know. Ron Lancaster was, you know, the the best coach I probably played for, but was also a tough individual. He was a tough guy to read. You didn't get close to Ron. Like, you didn't get no. close. Um, he was close with Tiggs. Yeah, was... Like, there were certain guys that he would he, – he, he had the ultimate faith in, obviously, Danny and Darren. But you can never really get too close to them, right? Why, why do you think that was? No. I think it was because in his, I use a line that he says he said. I heard him say it, and he might have said it to Bernie Custis. But he said, "I don't discuss personnel with personnel." I think part of it was because at some point he was going to have to cut you, trade you, or yeah. sit you down, and that's not an easy thing to do when you're chummy with somebody. Yeah, yeah. you know. And I th- so I think he had his guys. He had you know Calvin, and he had Orlando, and he had you know. He liked O'Shea when he came, and he liked, you know, obviously Danny and Darren. And he loved Carl. Those were his guys. Yeah. And, and, on, and on the other side of the ball, Suds, he had me, Phil Brick. Uh, oh, yeah. Campbell. Campbell. He Tiggs. had, uh, he he had Tiggs. Tiggs. He had his few guys, and the rest of the guys were on the QEW in, in, in two minutes if you didn't do your but job. I, I think of that, though. Think of that relationship. Like, think of the pride and the humility that both those two guys, two Oh, proud, to come together? And coach yeah. together, together. Oh, that was massive. Um, yeah, that was. And you know, Sudsy could be hard, and you know, think of Ron. Like I got this guy who was the former head coach as the defensive yeah. coordinator, and that took a know. lot. Yeah, just to goes to show the it. success he had over the over yeah. his career as a player and as a coach. On it was awesome. But I think that was part of the thing with Ron. And I think again, I think he saw a lot of guys come and go, and you know. I, I mean, I think he cared about us, but he just, it's hard. Like, you, you know. Yeah. But he always you know, said that, you know, he, the, the best thing I think he ever said to us is at the start of every year was, I want the same guys in the locker room, yeah. these same guys at the end of the year. And to your point about going to freaking, you know, BC to play against Calgary in, in, you know, 2009, or pardon me, 1999 with 40 something guys, which is unheard of. Now you're carrying rosters of 65, 70 guys. No problem. We had nobody extra. So yeah, I think that team. was a nice, but I, but again, that was, I didn't mind doing that. Nope. I mean, I got a little annoyed when you turn around and Val, Carl and Bernsey are back there goofing around and Seth and I are dragging and Princeton and his dragon, right? But we didn't, we Marty, we didn't. Marty, Marty, Marty Arsenal and Marty myself. Marty Arsenal, and, <laughs> oh my God. But, uh, we, didn't, we didn't know any better though. I don't even think no. we knew we had 47 no. guys. We just, that was oh, our no. team. That's what we, we did. didn't know any better, right? But I think you, I, I, Mike, you said that about when at the preseason, the first meeting, about how this is our team. Once yep. we start the season, unless the guys get hurt, this is the team I want to continue to play. And like that was That's kind of, you know, I had come, yeah, and I had come from, you know, down here where it's like you have one bad practice and there's three guys standing there behind you. You're like, Ooh, like, yeah. So it was nice. That was kind of a nice, okay, I can have a, not relax. We, we still competed and we worked hard and we, you know, but I, again, I liked his practices. I mean, I think back to our practices where, you know, here's, here's the number of plays we got to get done. Yep. If it takes you two hours, it takes you two hours. If it takes you 45 minutes, it takes you 45 minutes. Yeah. You guys yeah. figure it out. Yeah. He loved his rundown days. That was the one thing that Ronnie loved. You got to get your run. <laughs> you got to run around that field. that God knows how many times, 12 times or whatever it was. I hated every step. 
but I do I knew that there was ice cold beer and a DJ or something afterwards sitting in the back of a pickup truck. So, man, Acker, we we can go on and on. We gotta we gotta wrap up because uh, I don't know about Hitch, but I got a job and I have to go to yeah. work. And you got How's a job. the basketball going, Mike? I'm I'm waiting to get the get the franchise down here in Buffalo. Right. I know. Well, well, we'll see what you could do, buddy. It's it's going amazing. It's going amazing. So now that the border seems to be back to normal, we'll get you up here. We got to get you up for a game, anyways, and hang out and, and uh, yeah. shoot the shit and do all that good stuff. But uh, Hacker, I, I love tried the coming over during the summer. I had to go to, I had to my finances stuff and with Meridian Credit, so I was oh, going yes. to, and I didn't realize that I had to have a COVID test. I, so I drive across the border because obviously they don't check you when you when you co- go from the states yep. to Canada. And the guy's like, "Do you have this?" I'm like, "No." He's like, well, what are you doing? He's like, well, I'm going to the bank. He's like, yeah, but you got to have this and this. You haven't done a coat. I said, no. He goes, you got to just take the sheet of paper and you got to go back over. So I just looked back around. I was like, thank God they didn't pull me over and like <laughs> have me sit there for three hours. Oh, crazy, man. Uh-huh. Crazy world. But it seems to be getting better, Hacker. You made today yes. better, buddy. Love yep. seeing you, fella. Say hi Great to Great seeing you, boys. Hopefully we'll see you again. All, All right, right brother. And, and we'll see you, fellas. Say boys. You've been listening to Morialli and Hitch. Literally the worst podcast we have on the Tie Cats Audio Network. While they may not, we value your feedback. Let us know your thoughts by email. Hit M and H at Tiecats.ca. For the latest on your Hamilton Tiger Cats, subscribe to the Tie Cats Audio Network on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts.